Hello and welcome to Great Food. May Shaben is here with us in the kitchen and normally we have chefs here cooking things for us, but May's not gonna cook for us. Rather, she's gonna show us how to keep the food that we cook safe to eat for our family and friends. So thank you so much for coming, May. Thank you for Great. having me. And tell us a little bit, what do you do? You, you do this for the Iowa Restaurant Association. Yes, I am one of two uh, trainers in our office uh, for people that work in the food service industry. We do a class called Surf Safe mm -hmm. and right now, now we're doing about two classes a month where people come in and get certified in food safety and sanitation. Great. Now I understand that in starting in 2018, they're going to require that every restaurant in Iowa have a food certi safety certification person on staff. That is correct. And um, what's interesting is that even though this doesn't go into effect until 2018, there are already quite a few people who are complying with this and taking these classes just because people in the food community, in the restaurant community, really take food safety very seriously. That's correct. Um, you know, Nobody cares more about food safety than the, the restaurant operators and the employees uh, running our restaurants here in Iowa today. It's their livelihood. They can't take shortcuts. So it's something that is top of mind and a very important priority for them. Well, that's that's terrific. So great. So show us a few of the things. And you know, even though you you do these classes for professionals, we can learn about this f for the rest of us at home because uh, it's just as important. Oh yes. Yeah. And you know what I just said is kind of the key. Mm -hmm. um, don't take shortcuts. Right. So um, even though people that are in the restaurant industry are professionals and they're trained in this stuff, mm -hmm. then. It, it, but it's more important for consumers to, to practice these things as well in their own home when, when they're preparing food. Right, so. because most of us eat at home more often than we eat out. So, you know, chances are, we, you know, we'd better make sure the food we eat at home is safe. Oh, yes. Oh, so, yes. Great. So what? what so the import, the, there's, there's three things that really I wanted to kind of focus in on. And first and foremost, people have to be healthy when they're mm -hmm. preparing food. Mm -hmm. Healthy and practicing good personal hygiene. And uh, a lot of that, of course, we talk about hand washing whether we're in the restaurant industry or, or wherever, hand washing is, is definitely key. And I brought um, two friends here, um, <laughs> my friends uh, Staff and Strep, and we actually in class toss these, these guys around and kind of demonstrate how easily things can be transferred from one person to the other. Uh, and so good hand washing, making sure that you're healthy when you're preparing food, and doing all of those those things that focus on good good personal hygiene. So if you have like a bad cold, you probably shouldn't be preparing food for anyone. Probably not. Right. And all there right. are certain symptoms really to look for in the industry um, in regards to handling employee illness mm -hmm. and assigning people to different tasks depending on how they're feeling. So. Interesting, yeah, good idea. So, all right, and then we have... Um, so then the other thing I wanted to just briefly talk about what consumers really need to be careful with at home is adequate temperature control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's everything from how to thaw foods properly, how to cook foods to the proper internal temperature, how to cool foods properly and make sure that those uh, leftovers are getting refrigerated properly. Absolutely. Um, when it comes to uh, thawing food properly, mm -hmm. you know, taking hamburger frozen hamburger out of the refrigerator in the or morning. In the freezer and setting it on your counter? Yes, on the freezer <laughs> and setting it on the counter and hoping that it will be thawed by the time you come home from work so you can throw hamburgers on the grid. Bad idea. Is really not what you, what you should be doing. Right. Um, so you thaw in the refrigerator, refrigerator. or the microwave? It, yes, as long as the food is going to be cooked right, if, right afterwards right, in, the in the microwave. In the microwave, you have to cook it right afterwards. You can also thaw food um, under running water mm -hmm. as long as that water is drinkable, 70 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. Uh -huh. And you can also um, thaw food as part of the cooking process. So right. throwing a frozen hamburger on the grill and, and thawing it during the cooking process That's is also fine. acceptable. Yeah. So as really long as you're just ways. not letting it sit at room temperature. Exactly. Room temperature is that uh, unsafe zone. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So. I'm a food safety geek, by the way. I love food <laughs> safety. So Anyway, so okay, so this is, the, you're going to show us how to take a thermometer, uh, how, to, how to take the temperature, because a lot of people mm -hmm. buy thermometers and then they're like, well, how do I do this? Yes. Especially with a thin food. Yes, and um, one of the requirements in the food code um, for people that are working in food service operations is to have a small diameter probe thermometer. Mm -hmm. And we actually state in the food code 1.5 milliliters, mm -hmm. millimeters, mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, and so uh, when you take the temperature of say a thin hamburger patty, then you wanna make sure that you stick it in the middle, mm -hmm. as much in the middle. And remember it's a small diameter probe. Right. So you're sticking it in, getting it in the middle, and getting an accurate temperature that way. Interesting, okay. okay. Some people will actually take um, 
the thermometer and stick it in the side. That's what I do. Is that wrong? That, which is okay, okay as well. You just <laughs> the key is when you stick it in right. the side that you want the probe to be in the middle. Right. Exactly. Okay. And I do that with thin pork chops too. Yes. So. Exactly. Or fish fillet is mm -hmm. another mm -hmm. another item that you would use a small diameter probe thermometer on. And then in the chicken, you know, we always say the thickest part of the mm -hmm. product. Mm -hmm. So um, in the chicken, it would just be obviously in the breast. And again, maybe not straight down, but mm -hmm. on the side angle, so you're really getting in the middle, um, would be the proper way to take the temperature of a, of a chicken breast or chicken, right. that, chicken that we see here. And not touching the bone. I not touching the right. bone, staying away from the bone um, and getting a good temperature reading. So. Good. Um, so you were going to tell. Okay. So before uh, we started, ta we we started um, going in front of the camera. You had me put this scary <laughs> glitter bug potion. It's sort of a germ simulant. It's not real germs. No, it's, it's not. But it's a germ simulant. Uh, and um, so I put that on my hand, and then yes. you said, "Go wash your hands." Yes. And I said, "Okay." So I went and washed my hands, and you know, I thought I did a pretty good job. But we went ahead and and taped. Uh, we had <laughs> looked at this under a black light to see what you know. The black light actually shows where the germs remain. Exactly. Oh, and here a, we are. Yeah. So look at that. Um, looks like around my little finger uh, fingernails, I missed it. And. Oh, ick. <laughs> what, what do you have to say about that? Would I fail your class? <laughs> well, you need to, to wash up to the, the all the forearms. Mm -hmm. um, we usually say up to the elbow. So, so it looks like, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure how oh, I might no, grade look that. at that. That's terrible. <laughs> and you know, um, maybe I should just take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> That's key too. <laughs> well, as you said, that sheds a whole new light on food safety. Oh, yes. I really appreciate that. I mean, the important thing is just to remember, really wash your hands well. I thought I had my hands washed pretty well, but mm -hmm. you know, almost seems like you know you almost have to scrub them oh yes yeah. and you know finger fingernail brushes and things like that are also tools that we use in the food service industry to make sure hands are being washed correctly great well thank so. you so much may for coming in and showing us these things thank It'll keep, you keep all of our food a little safer